Hello everyone. Hope you all doing well and welcome back to our Windows Server 2022 beginners video series on MSFT webcast. In this video, we will see the steps on how to configure Kerberos policy settings in Windows Server 2022 Active Directory. Kerberos is the authentication protocol used in an Active Directory domain environment to authenticate logins and grant accounts access to domain resources. An account can be a user or a computer because computers must also authenticate to the domain. Kerberos provides mutual authentication between a client and a server or between two servers. Mutual authentication means the identity of both parties is verified. Kerberos is also the basis for authorization to network resources in a Windows Active Directory domain. By reducing the lifetime of Kerberos tickets, you reduce the risk of legitimate users' credentials being stolen and successfully used by an attacker. However, this ticket lifetime reduction also increases authorization overhead. In most environments, these settings shouldn't need to be changed. In case, if you want to change these settings, you have to configure the Kerberos policy settings in default domain policy GPO. This is our Windows Server 2022 domain controller for msoptivewebcast.com domain. Log on to a Windows Server 2022 domain controller using a domain administrator account. On Server Manager, click on Tools and select Group Policy Management. Click and expand Group Policy Objects. Find the GPO with the name Default Domain Policy. Right-click it and select Edit. In the Group Policy Management Editor window, navigate to Computer Configuration, Policies, Windows Settings, Security Settings, Expand Account Policies and click on Kerberos Policies. We can see the list of Kerberos Policy Settings. First, we have setting named Enforce Use Logon Restrictions. This policy setting ensures that every user who requests for a user ticket is validated against the user right settings on the target computer. A user ticket is a certificate issued by Active Directory that allows user to request a service ticket. The user must either have allow logon locally or access this computer from the network rights on the target computer. This policy is enabled by default and we are not going to change that. Let's click on OK to close this properties window. Next, we have the policy setting named maximum lifetime for a service ticket. This policy setting determines the maximum number of minutes that a granted session ticket can be used to access a particular service. The value must be 10 minutes or greater and it must be less than or equal to the value of the maximum lifetime for user ticket policy setting. It is advisable to set maximum lifetime for service ticket to 600 minutes. You can set service tickets to never expire by setting the value to zero. In this video, we will configure the Kerberos policy settings for a company in which people work 8 hour shifts. So we are setting up Kerberos for up to 8 hours. So I'm going to change the value of this policy settings to 480 minutes. Click on apply and OK. The maximum lifetime for user ticket policy setting determines the maximum amount of time in hours that a user's ticket granting ticket can be used. When a user's ticket granting ticket expires, a new one must be requested or the existing one must be renewed. Default value is 10 hours that is equal to the default lifetime of service tickets. I'm going to change the value to 8 hours. If we set this value to 0, the user ticket would never expire. Click on Apply and OK. ADDS can renew a user ticket when it nears the end of its validity period. Maximum lifetime for user ticket renewal policy determines the time in days during which a user ticket may be renewed. It is advisable to set maximum lifetime for user ticket renewal to 7 days and that policy is already set. So we are not going to modify the settings of this policy 
named maximum lifetime for user ticket renewal. Last policy is maximum tolerance for computer clock synchronization. This policy setting determines the maximum time difference allowed between a Kerberos message timestamp and the receiving computer's current time. If the time difference falls outside this limit, the message is considered invalid. The default is 5 minutes. Timestamp messages are corrected for time zone, so it's important to have the correct time zone set on all computers in the domain and have the domain controller clock synchronized with a reliable time source. By default, all member computers are synchronized with the domain controller's clock. If the difference between a client computer clock and the domain controller clock is less than the maximum time difference that is specified in this policy, any timestamp that's used in a session between the two devices is considered to be authenticate. It's advisable to set maximum tolerance for computer clock synchronization to a value of 5 minutes. And that's why we are not going to change this policy settings as well. I'm going to click on OK to close the properties window. Although the default policy settings are appropriate for most of the environments, these policies can be made more stringent by decreasing user and service ticket lifetimes. However, on the other side, this creates more processing load on the domain controller. I have set up these settings just for the testing purpose in our test environment. You can set up the Kerberos policy settings as per your organization's requirement. After configuring Kerberos policy settings, I'm going to close the group policy editor window. The GPU is already linked at the root of the domain. Under msftwebcast.com, we can see default domain policy is already linked. It is necessary to wait for the policy settings to take effect on the targeted client computers. The default group policy refresh interval is 90 minutes. We can use GB update slash force command to manually update the group policy settings on targeted computers. Let's open Windows PowerShell by right-clicking on Start button and selecting Windows PowerShell Admin. We will use KList command to display a list of currently cached Kerberos tickets on this domain controller. Type command KList and hit Enter key. Here we can see we have two cached tickets on our domain controller. We can see this is the administrator's cached Kerberos ticket. Note down the start and end time. We can confirm that the duration is currently 10 hours. Type command GP update slash force and hit enter to manually update the group policy on this domain controller. We can see the computer and user policy update has been completed successfully. Now I'm going to restart this domain controller. After restart, let's again sign into this domain controller using domain administrator's account. I click on Start button and select Windows PowerShell Admin. At PowerShell, again I'm going to type command KList and press Enter key. Again, look at the administrator's catch Kerberos ticket. Take a close look at the start and end time. Since we have changed the Kerberos settings to 8 hours, we can see this time the duration is only 8 hours. This means a Kerberos policy is working as configured. Again, I want to remind you that the default policy settings are appropriate for most of the environments. If required, these policies can be made more stringent by decreasing user and service ticket lifetimes. In this video, we have learned how to configure Kerberos policy settings in Windows Server 2022 Active Directory. That's all for this video. I hope you found this video helpful. If you have any questions and suggestions regarding this video, please let me know in the comment section. Thank you all for watching this video. Have a nice day.